Good morning, first grade. I hope you are having a great start to your morning. So today we are going to take another look at Me Jane. So we read the story yesterday and you noticed and wondered and shared some great questions. So we're going to go back today and talk through the answers to some of those great questions. And then we're also going to talk about a vocabulary strategy called the outside in strategy. And it's something that you can do when you come to a word in your when you're reading and you don't know what the word means. So we'll talk about that strategy. So we have two two main goals for for today's learning video, this lesson, uh, answering our questions and then talking about that vocabulary strategy. So here were some of the questions that um, you had shared after reading Me, Jane. Where does Jane watch animals? Why is Jane so curious about animals in nature and feel a part of the animal world? How does Jane learn about animals? And how did Jane just wake up and her dream came true? And a few people had uh, had shared things that they noticed and wondered about that end of the book where you know it, it's talking about her childhood and then all of a sudden it seems like she wakes up and she's an adult, uh, you know, in Africa living and working with the animals. So we'll talk a little bit more about that um, since, you know, so many of you had had mentioned something about that. All right. So where does Jane watch animals? If we look back in the text. And here we are. Uh, let's see where Jane <clears throat> watches animals. So here's the story. And when we get right here to this part, I can we can see her in the illustrations watching the animals in the tree. And she's watching the birds make their nests, the spiders, the squirrels. And it says that she studied the, the animals, the animals and plants in her backyard. So I would think that we can put in the completed answer section that Jane watches the animals outside. that are in her backyard. And I think that this is a question that we can put in the completed answer part. Um, I think it's, you know, we know that that is the answer. We've taken that right from the text. It says it right there that she was watching all of the animals uh, in her backyard. Okay, now the next one, this is one of those questions that is a little different from the first one where we may not be able to completely answer this question just from what is given in the text. We may need to kind of think about it a little bit ourselves and use our own ideas and what we know combined with what we see in the text. But why she was so curious about nature and, and why does she feel a part of the animal world? So if we go back into the text, we see that on, in the very beginning of the book, it says she loved to be outside. And then we also see where, you know, she's spending a lot of time watching the animals, reading about animals. She's making notes and drawings and writings about animals and even puzzles. And it says here that she's curious about, you know, where eggs came from. So she's you know, interested. I think that this is a, a question that, you know, it, it, it doesn't specifically say in the text, like, this is the answer to that question. But we can just kind of know that as a child, she just always grew up as a, as a kid, starting very early on. She was very interested in animals and nature. And she wanted to just learn and know everything she could about them. And I think it it made her really happy. It made her feel, you know, like she was a part of it because she loved it so much. So I think this is one of those questions, again, that we'll put in this section. Sorry. Uh, because it's, again, there's not a specific kind of right or wrong answer from the text itself, but we can use all of the clues. So Jane was just always curious about animals and nature. And she loved to be outside, which I think, you know, if, if it's something that she really loves and it brings her joy, it, it makes her feel connected to uh, the, the animal world and feels a part of it because she just has always been so interested and curious and has always loved it. So I think that 
that it's a good answer to our question and it's one, like I said, we'll put in this section um, because we are having to kind of take clues from the text as well as what we know, you know, when someone is really interested in something and they really enjoy something, you know, they, they want to be a part of it and be, you know, kind of always be involved with it. And I think that's the case with Jane and, and the animals. And we also see that her eventual, I mean, her dream is to live and work with animals in the jungles. So I think that also is, is a clue that it's just that's always been what she's been interested in. All right, so how does Jane learn about animals? I think in some of the pages that we just looked at, we saw that she learned about animals in a couple of different ways, right? She uh, watched the animals that were outside in her yard. But she also read about the animals. So she would study the plants and animals that she saw, but then she would also go and read about them and write about them. And that's how she uh, learned. So a combination of watching them in real, per in, in real life in person uh, and reading about them. All right, so Jane watched the animals in her backyard and, and read about the animals she studied. Okay, and again, I think that that's again, more uh, a question more like number one, where we can see that specific answer from the text. Uh, unlike number two, where it's maybe not quite as clear cut, but it's more, you know, we, we have to, like I said, use clues from the story plus what we know where this one, number three, we just, we see it there. Okay, number four, how did Jane just wake up and her dream came true? So let's go back into the book and look at the end to try to help understand. So this is telling us all about her childhood, what she did as a kid, um, you know, told us about Jubilee, how much she loved Jubilee. And it says, Jane dreamed of a life in Africa too. And then it carries on a life living with and helping all animals. At night, Jane would tuck Jubilee into bed, say her prayers and fall asleep. To awake one day to her dream come true. So I think at first, when maybe you first read through this, it looks like Jane, you know, went to bed one night and then gets up the next morning and she's, you know, in Africa working with and helping the animals, you know, from one day to the next. But really, the book is just jumping ahead. And sometimes books will do that. They can tell about something that happened in the past and then kind of jump ahead. Or in this case, they're telling about her childhood. And then they're leaving out a big gap, a big part of the story of as she's growing older and jumps to telling us this is where she ended up as an adult. So it's not that it was from one day to the next. It's just that the book has kind of left out a space of time in the story and is you know focusing on her childhood and then leaves out the part of her getting older. And then it, it shows that eventually after some time has passed, she did end up you know, having her dream come true. So I think that was a great question and uh, a great thing to point out. So let's, let's put that here. Uh, yeah, let's put that here. So the book tells about Jane's childhood and then jumps to show that her dream true as an adult. Okay, so sometimes, like I said, books can do that. They can jump around in time um, in, in, in their storytelling and go from one time period to another. So it's not that, again, she just went to bed one day and then all of a sudden woke up the very next day. It's just that the book left out that time. But the time passed, the book just didn't include information about that uh, period of time. So again, another great question and another great thing to notice. And we'll, uh, we'll keep these here. We'll keep talking about this book and, and we may you know, have some more to add to these answers. But 
think you're doing a great job. And again, this is always the first step. What a good reader does when they first read a book is notice and wonder. Okay, so now let's jump to the question about or, or the strategy, the outside in strategy. So you may remember when we read My Librarian is a Camel that the outside in strategy is when we come across a word that we don't know what it means and we use the clues outside of the word. So we look at the other words and sentences, we look at the illustrations or the pictures or whatever else is going on, the clues outside of the word. And then we look at the word itself. We look inside of the word to see if there's any clues in the word itself. Like, does it sound like another word I know? Does it have an ending or a beginning part that can help me figure out what it means? So we look outside to all of the clues outside of the word and then in to help us come up with a really strong definition or meaning of the word. So we're going to look at the word observe. And you may know this word, maybe you've heard it, but we're going to, to practice using the outside in strategy with the word observe. So let's go back to the book and one more time and get find the part in the book where she says, uh, where it mentions the word observe. Okay, so it says, and, and this is continuing, the sentence is continuing from the page before, and observed the miracle and observed the miracle and we see you know we see what she's doing she's sitting there watching very still uh, the the chicken so let's look at the clues outside of the word by looking at at what is happening in this part of the book okay so starting here we see that jane is watching the birds and the spiders and the squirrels, and she's she's watching them. So let's kind of keep that in our mind. So she's watching the animals. Okay, then it says that she learned all that she could about the animals and plants she studied in her backyard and read about in books. So she's studying the animals, uh, you know, in person in her backyard. She's reading about them in books and learning more about them. She's making all of these notes and drawings and information about the animals that she's studying. And then uh, it says one day, Curious Jane wondered where eggs came from. So she's, she's curious about something and she has a question about something and she wants to find out you know, how something works. So she goes to the chicken coop and stayed very still and observed the miracle. So I, I'm seeing all these things. She's watching, she studied, she's reading, she was curious, and she sat very still and watched the things she was curious about. So I think that we have some pretty good clues for outside of the word. So let's kind of talk about those one second. Okay, so here's all the things she did. She was watching and listening to the animals. She was curious about where eggs came from. She sat really still. She was looking and waiting. And then she sees the miracle, the egg was laid. And you know, there, there she is. All right, so those are all of the clues outside of the word. Now, if we look at this word, observe, I notice at the end of it, I see ed and when i i say the word observed i i see that it has an ed at the end and i know that when a word ends with ed it means it it happens in the, it happened in the past so if it isn't the word observed with ed it would be the word observe observe so maybe you've heard that word before that's what we mean when we say looking inside of the word to see if there is something in the word that either you know is a word similar to a word that you know or if there is an ending that can help you figure out the meaning or if there is a um, word part at the beginning of the word that can help you that's kind of what we mean by looking in the word so with the word observe and thinking about all of the things that she was doing 
I think that we could say the word observe or observed, meaning it happened in the past, is to really watch and listen closely. You know, it's not just kind of taking a quick look at something and, oh, but when you are observing something or you observe something, you know, you, you are really closely studying it. You are really closely watching and focusing on it. And, you know, oftentimes you're curious about something. You want to learn about something. And so then you observe it to learn that, that information, to, to learn what you were curious about. Okay. So that was, again, the word observed. Uh, or observe, that just means happening now versus happening in the past. But we used all the clues from the text to help us figure out the meaning. Okay, so there may have been some other words in the text that you were unfamiliar with. And these were just some that I thought about. Um, coop, right, maybe that's a new word for you, but the chicken coop, um, using the clues, is where the chickens live. Uh, miracle, right, she really thought uh, a miracle that... She was curious about the egg and then, you know, it, it was there and it was just such a, a miracle. So something really special happening. Uh, sap, it mentioned the sap. She could almost feel the sap uh, running through the, the tree. So that is like the, the sweet, uh, like syrup can be made from sap that's inside of the trees. Uh, the, the sticky, if you've ever felt that on a tree branch. Um, curious, we've talked a lot about that. Curious is you know, being really interested in something, wanting to know uh, more about something, having a lot of questions about something. And then cherished, she cherished her uh, pet, her, her stuffed animal jubilee. So when you cherish something, that means that you really, really love it and, and care for it and you don't want anything bad to happen uh, to it. And it's just, it's very special to you. So those were maybe just uh, wanted to share some other words that were in the text. So what I would like you to do is in your journal, uh, in your, your writing journal, just uh, include the word observed and you can draw a picture to help us remember the meaning of it. All right, so thanks for your kind attention and uh, let me know if you need any help or have any questions and I'll see everybody soon. Bye.